Democrats like to say that no one needs an AR-15 for self-defense. That no one could possibly need all 30 rounds. Jerome Davison, who is a Republican candidate for Congress in Arizona, released what is maybe the most insane political ad I have ever seen. And after I show you this, I'm going to also discuss who his campaign manager is. You are not ready for this. So let me play this video and then uh, I'll get to how stupid this is and also who is managing this campaign, which helps to put a bit of this into perspective. Democrats like to say that no one needs an AR-15 for self-defense. That no one could possibly need all 30 rounds. But when this rifle is the only thing standing between your family and a dozen angry Democrats in Klan hoods, you just might need that semi-automatic in all 30 rounds. Quite possibly the dumbest political ad I've ever seen. So I'm going to get to breaking down how stupid this is, in particular the Democrats in Klan hoods. And I'll also get to, shortly, who is managing this campaign. But quickly on just the the aspect or the, the point he's trying to make here about how you need an AR-15 in case there are Klan members attacking your home. Why are they only armed with bats and, like, rakes? <laughs> if AR-15s, if you can legally purchase an AR-15, and you can, why aren't they armed with them as well? But of course, <laughs> that goes completely unaddressed in this ridiculous campaign ad, because it's not about reality it's not about facts. It's not about data. It's not about what is actually right, what people actually need. It's simply about doing what you need to do to get ahead in a Republican primary. And the more insane you are, the better you are going to do. So there is no polling right now. I went to check. There's no polling right now on this district in this primary, uh, which the voting, I think, is in uh, early August. But... um. I'm going to guess <laughs> he's now going to be at the uh, front of the line because of this ad alone. Let's get to his campaign manager, shall we? This is so, so stupid. So Davison is a political newcomer and former running back for the Oakland Raiders. His campaign is managed by Austin Steinbart, also known as Baby Q, a QAnon influencer who claims to be from the future. His campaign manager claims to be from the future. Eyewitness reports indicate that he is riding around in a modified DeLorean with his partner, Marty. <laughs> this is so stupid. All of this is so stupid. How are we in a world where, look, we've had the first uh, black campaign manager, the first female campaign manager. We now potentially have the first campaign manager from the future. So that's something worth, you know, getting excited about. But apart from that, how are we living in this world where this is just happening, that this exists? And he may win now because of how insane this ad is. The team's new ad quickly went viral on Twitter, amassing more than 1 million views in the first five hours, then doubling that amount in total views by the afternoon. Davison had fewer than 5,000 Twitter followers before the ad dropped, and the total increased to more than 8,700 over the next several hours. So look, I will give this uh, team credit here, because they know, in terms of gaining power, in terms of winning, they know what they have to do. Be so outrageous that people can't help but share your video around, leading to you having more name recognition, leading to a better shot at you winning a Republican primary. Now, look, personally, I don't think I have many viewers that are Republican, let alone living in this specific district. So I don't care about sharing this around and showcasing how stupid it is. But man, you have someone like this that knows how to play the game. That's what they're doing here. Maybe he's this stupid. 
Maybe he thinks his campaign manager really is from the future. Maybe he thinks Democrats really are running around in clan hoods. But I tend to think he's just playing the game and he knows how to win. He knows how to gain power. And that's what he's doing. And he realizes the electorate is so stupid that he can shove this garbage out there and it's going to help him. Now, a little more on the campaign manager before I get to um, the hoods <laughs> in the uh, in the video. Those Democrats. So along with his QAnon affiliation, Steinbart has also been in legal trouble for hacking the medical records of celebrities while receiving treatment in a facility in March 2020. He pleaded guilty to one felony charge in 2021 and was released after spending 225 days in prison. Steinbart also got in trouble with the authorities in September 2020 after he was found to be using a fake penis or Wizenator to avoid taking a routine drug test while out on pre-trial bail, the Daily Beast reported. This guy is just a barrel of laughs. I mean, it, <laughs> just... What do I do with this? What do I do with this? You have somebody here who... Look, Republicans claim to care so much about law and order. Very important. Law and order. Obey the law. This campaign manager just in jail for almost a year, whatever, uses a, a whizinator to avoid a drug test, whatever, who cares, because he's a Republican and nothing matters. Now, let's get quickly, you see a lot of taps here, but I will go through these rapidly because of how obvious this shit is. So, obviously, Democrats, which I, ha I have many criticisms of sitting Democratic lawmakers, the ones in Washington, many criticisms, as you've seen on this channel, but they are not the ones wearing the hoods. So Ku Klux Klan newspaper declares support for Trump. This is back in 2016. Of course, again, they supported him for uh, 2020. A former KKK leader endorses Trump for president again, and Tucker Carlson for VP, again, showing you who uh, the kinds of people that enjoy the Tucker Carlson show and the kind of garbage he spews on a regular basis. Kevin McCarthy won't punish Republicans who joined white nationalist conference. Again, showing this is not just, you know, a few people. This is the party. This is the Republican leader, not punishing his own members for joining a white nationalist conference, which of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar were the ones in uh, at this conference. Um, Buffalo shooter, targeted black neighborhood, this is worth pointing out because, of course, the shooter pushed the Great Replacement Theory, and nearly 7 in 10 Republican voters believe in Great Replacement Theory. Again, showing you this is, of course, a Republican issue, not a Democratic one. And you also have Republican Senate candidates promoting the Replacement Theory. And just quickly on the actual demographics here, non-whites make up... Four in 10 Democratic voters, but fewer than a fifth of Republican voters. So you see here, as of 2019, 81% of Republican slash leaning Republican voters are white. Yet somehow, Democrats are storming your house with, uh, you know, brooms and sticks and rakes. Somehow they can't buy guns. But storming your house, those Democrats in their uh, KKK hoods trying to take your home. Okay. I, I don't, I don't know where to go with this because this is just on its face so ridiculous and you know this guy now is going to very likely be the front runner, possibly win this primary. And let's hope, uh, I'm not sure the makeup of this district, but let's hope this guy doesn't end up in Congress. But holy crap, they, the one lesson here is these Republican candidates, people like uh, uh, Jerome Davison here, they know how to play the game. They know what they need to do in order to hit the right notes in order to gain power. And in terms of that alone, not in terms of their the way they're doing it, but in terms of that alone, that is something that Democrats have to learn. They have to learn, in particular, progressive Democrats need to learn how to play the game to gain power. Because yes, while they are correct on the issues, if they don't have any power to actually pass the agenda or push their agenda forward in some way, then having the right positions on issues means nothing.
you have to know how to also play the game. 